It's prime time for prime rib today. We uh, got a giant whole rib eye. This thing's like 18 inches long. I mean, seriously, it's giant. I don't know if you guys can, can see in here or not, but that thing almost fills up the silverback. You're gonna find, if you do get a whole ribeye, it's kind of in three pieces, okay? You can see the little finger grooves, I call them finger grooves, where they trim those ribs out, where those, it's set right there. You're gonna, that piece, and then there's a piece on the opposite side of that ribeye, that if you fold out, use a little knife or kind of fold it out, there's a lot of silver skin in there. You're gonna wanna get as much of that as you can. Use a really nice flexible bony knife and kind of get underneath that silver skin and fillet it off. I mean, you don't want to take big chunks of muscle. It's an expensive chunk of meat. You don't want to waste anything, but you want to do your best to use butcher's twine to kind of truss this guy up. So instead of it being an oblong like this, think about it. If I, if it, you know, if I got an oblong and, it, and it's uh, or an oval that's cooking like this, these outer edges are going to get done way before that inner interior piece. But if I pull that in and make it as close to a circle as I can, I should get pretty even doneness all the way on the edges and a real nice medium in the middle. But what makes prime rib special? What makes prime rib different than steak or brisket or whatever? It's all about that crust. Uh, rosemary, garlic rub, some hazelnut coffee, a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit more salt, uh, and some more black pepper. Mix that up, mix it up about two days in advance, and let that kind of sit in a zip top bag and kind of marry together and get really happy. Coffee has a great earthiness. Rosemary goes great with beef. Garlic, garlic and beef, come on guys. Um, I love that Tones Rosemary Garlic as a base because it's got a real nice crunch to it and a good tooth. So we're back checking in. Uh, it's been uh, right about, let's see, uh, almost four hours on the button. The middle of our prime rib is running about 110, 111 degrees. Uh, so this is the time you really want to start checking the ends, all the different pieces, because you know you may want to have it where you have some really rare pieces and some really done pieces. Not everyone likes that ultra rare prime rib, like, well, everyone should, frankly. But once I get to about 115, 120, we're just gonna kind of manhandle this thing gingerly and get her set out here. So gently set this guy down. This would be a really good time to re-season as well. Let's get our pit closed. Let's go ahead and crank it all the way up. And then I'm going directly to the Cambro with it. All right guys, so the uh, Silverbacks hit 475. It's making its way to 500. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. Uh, and man, you can just see the place filling with smoke. This thing is just laying it down right now. So let's uh, go ahead and get our meat back on here gonna put it in about every three minutes you're gonna roll it okay it's gonna be super smoky you're probably not gonna see much of me that's okay but this is what we're gonna do I don't know how much of it will make it <laughs> on the video here so let's get this guy back in there you that sizzle yeah those grates are hot so let's give it a few minutes here Woo! and then uh, we'll come back and check it When we're searing it like we are now, I pick that up, set it on the next side. Let it sear. Pick it up, roll it over, set it on the next side. I do not twist or, or, or drag that thing across the grates. I don't want to lose all that crust. The crust where it's at. Crust and ultra juicy meats, why we bother to do prime rib in the first place. You know, feel your way through the process, but trust that as long as you don't take that thing in the dead center over about 135, 140 degrees, you'll have a beautiful piece of meat. And if you and if you've got a warm box, and you can hold that meat, then shoot for about 120, 125, and let it carry up. As always, guys, uh, I'm Shane Draper. If you got any questions, email me, pitmaster at gorillagrills.com. Tweet us, Facebook us, at Gorilla Grills. And hey, we do all these videos, right? Subscribe to the Gorilla Grills YouTube channel, will you? We put out a lot of great information on there. I know they're, in addition to these, uh, you know, the turkey and the, this prime rib, there's a whole plethora of great sides on there that no one is talking about right now that you need to check out. Uh, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to ensure that you get the information you need to be a star in your backyard. And that's what we're all about. Thanks for watching this guys. And we hope this little video helps you have a very Merry Christmas.